Hi there and welcome to the Maya Learning Channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make dynamic text using MASH. If you're new to MASH and want to know the basics, you can check out our motion graphics playlist. But don't worry, it's not required watching to complete this tutorial. So to create our starting text, I'm just going to click the type tool sitting up on the shelf here. And then in the type tab of the attribute editor, I'm just going to change it to read cooking with Maya. Naturally, I have full control over fonts, sizes, and styles. In fact, Maya will automatically pick up any fonts in your OS's font folder and create 3D versions of them. Now I'm going to shrink the font size down and then thin out its extrude distance. There. and then I'll center it. To give it a splash of paint, I'm going to go into the texturing tab and click this button here, which is the main base color. The other ones are for extrusions and bevels, which I'm not going to bother with this time around. Right now the letters have a standard blend shader attached to them, but let's change that to a more friendly Arnold shader instead. You know, I think the word Maya could use a bit more pop. So instead of grouping it with the other words, I'm going to backtrack a bit and make it its own object. So first I'll delete it here. And then I'll create a new type object. Maya. I'll center it and then shrink it down. All right, and then thin it out. And then I'll give it a nice teal Arnold shader. There, that's better. Cool. So now we have our two type objects. The next step is to make them dynamic. If you're already familiar with MASH, you might think, OK, I'll just make them a MASH network and then add a dynamics node. However, doing that treats each type object as a base primitive, then duplicates it, which obviously looks wrong. So instead, I'm going to select Mash, Dynamics, Add Shell Dynamics. This applies the same bullet physics as a dynamic Mash network, but then treats each letter as a single point in that network. So you can see they all fall apart now. Then I'll just do the same for my second type object. Don't worry if you get these cyclical warnings, the simulation will still work. At this point I can treat these letters like any other dynamic mesh network. I could add nodes to change their behavior or smash them into collider objects. In this case I'm going to try tossing them in a pan. To make my pan I'll first switch to the modeling standard workspace. Then I'll start with a simple sphere which I'll scale up to fix the text. I just want the bottom half for our pan, but it's a little too deep right now, so I'll scale it in Y until it looks about right. Then I'll also add some subdivisions via the Shape tab to smooth out the edge. Now right-clicking and going to Face Mode, I'm going to delete the entire upper half. There. Now to give the rest of the face some thickness, I'll go to the Modeling Toolkit and extrude them outward. Finally, I'll right-click, add new material, and create an Arnold shader. Let's go with a brushed metal preset. I'll just bring down the metalness a bit, and as well as the color. And now I'll just rename this Metal Material. All right, this is coming along. Now we just need our handle, so I'll create one using a cylinder. First I'll add a subdivision along the length. 
then rotate it sideways. I'm then going to delete all the faces that go into the pan since we won't ever see them. And then I'll just position and scale until it fits. The cylinder is poking through here, so we'll need to curve it to fit. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, then go to the side view. From here, I'll use wireframe mode and the move tool to reshape the end. See? Much better. Finally, I'm going to use Extrude again to give some extra thickness to this part of the handle. So Extrude, and there. Now I'll just color this part with our brushed metal. And then this back half with a new plastic material. So presets, plastic. I think I'll go with red. And then we'll rename this plastic material. Now all that's left to do is to take these two pieces and combine them into one object, which I will call pan. Great, now our pan is done, we just need for everything to collide. Rather than make the pan a regular collider object though, I'm going to instead make it another mesh network. This will actually get us more accurate collisions since mesh networks are evaluated a lot more frequently than collider objects are. Let me just rename these so I don't get confused. Of course, we don't need all these pans, so I'll reduce the number of points to one. Then I'll add a dynamics node. Of course, running the animation now causes both the letters and the pan to fall. To keep the pan up, I'll crank up its mash bias attributes, which bias the pan towards the other mash nodes rather than the dynamics. I'll also increase the mass too, since it should be heavier than the letters. There we go. As a bonus, the default low friction even makes it look like the pan is good and oily. So all I have to do is animate it tossing the letters around, which I'll do using a transform node. So you'll see I'm trying to tweak my numbers here, but the pan isn't moving. That's because I forgot to rewind my scene first. I can only see manual changes before dynamics start getting involved. You'll also notice that the pan is rotating from the center of its cooking surface, but I'd prefer it rotated from above the handle where a person's wrist would actually be. So here's a neat little trick to change its pivot. First I'm going to use the transform node to push the pan forward and down a bit. This puts my desired pivot point roughly on the grid's origin. So that if I create another transform node on top of this one, then it rotates from the pivot I originally wanted. To make things even easier, I can right click the controller null field and add a controller. This will give me a locator to play around with interactively in the viewport. The beauty of this is that if I ever want to change the center of rotation further, I can just tweak the values in the first transform node again. This way I can work open and freeform without having to worry about things becoming too permanent. This is easily one of MASH's greatest strengths. 
As another example of that, watch how I can rotate these words so they lie flat against the pan. And as you can see, everything still just works. Now I can keyframe the locator to animate the pan. To see it moving around on later frames though, I'll need to temporarily disable its dynamics. Now I'll just position the pan in a few places and hit the S key to keyframe. Just remember to re-enable dynamics during tests to check if the letters stay in the pan. In this case, they're not, so I'll need to swirl them a bit less. I'll do that just by pulling in some of their animation curves a little bit. So I'll pull this one down, down, a little bit more. And then I'll just turn dynamics back on. There, fixed. Maybe for some flare, I'll animate a little flip on the end too. So I'll rotate this down and then quickly back up. And then back down again. Nice. And that's really it. Uh, now that I'm done, I'll just add an Arnold physical skylight for rendering. As you can see from a test render, that gives us both a sky and lighting. Which I can adjust the look of in the attribute editor if I want. To render the whole animation though, I'll first need to go to the render settings. First I'll set the image format to PNG, then change from a single frame to multi-frame. And finally I'll specify a frame range. Now I'll just switch to the rendering menu set and go to render, render sequence. Hit the render sequence button and in a few minutes you should get something like this.